I've, I thought I already learned that chord. Well, you didn't. You, 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 you learned that shape. There's many shapes. There's almost infinite shapes. How do you play chords anywhere on the net? And where do chord shapes come in? Or where do, where do chord shapes fit into that? Okay. So, awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give a super detailed answer because we would be here for weeks if I explained literally everything. But what I can do is give you the high level of how does it actually work so you can be like, oh, that's how it works. And then you can explore deeper from there. Okay. In general, what is a chord? A chord, in my definition, is any two or more notes played at the same time. That's it. Two or more notes played simultaneously. Okay. Some people will argue that it's three. So why not? Let's just please everybody and say it's three notes played more, uh, you know, played at the same time. So what makes a chord? In our definition, let's just say three notes. I say it's two, but technically it's two. But to make a major or a minor chord, it's at least three notes played simultaneously. So how do you play a chord anywhere on the neck? Well, first of all, what makes up a chord out of those three notes? If you have three notes that you're going to play to make a chord at a minimum, well, what three notes are they? If you want to make, for example, a, let's just say an A minor chord, by definition, and I don't want you to start thinking too much, I just want to show you this as an example of how this works, okay? Then I'll tell you where chord shapes come in. By definition, the A minor chord is, literally, if you look it up in a, in a musical dictionary, A minor equals the A note, the C note, and the E note. So these notes here. And if you can't see what I'm playing, it doesn't matter about the shape. I'll show you about the shapes in a second. So just think A, C, E. So that means if the notes A, C, and E make the chord A minor, well, I know two things. Number one, I know that those notes A, C, and E repeat in different places on the neck, right? So that means if I play any A, C, or E note in any combination anywhere on the neck, that means I'm actually playing the A minor chord anywhere on the guitar neck. Let's make one up. So this is the first shape that I showed you. That's just a um, simple shape that you can play. I could also play an A minor chord like this, which is a bar chord, which has more A minor, uh, excuse me, has more A and C and E note, has more notes, right? But let me just stick with three for now. So let's say we're gonna make up a crazy chord. Let's say we have our A note here, we have our E note here, and then let's say, let's pick a C note somewhere else. Uh, I'll just pick, I'll take them all on the same, uh, same fret. So the, this note and this note and this note, all that's A, C, and E right there. So I'll play that. It's actually gonna make an A minor chord, okay? So, excuse me, it's, it's here. So this, it's hard to do. I don't, I don't tap when I play guitar, so it's hard to do this. But these notes, there. That's an A minor chord, right? What if I play the C here and the E here and the A here? It's hard to do, but that's also an A minor chord. So the point is the notes that make up the chord are what makes the chord. When you play those notes of the chord, for example, an A minor, an a minor chord is the notes A, C, and E. When you play a combination of A, C, and E anywhere on the guitar neck, you are actually playing an A minor chord. Now, obviously that can get confusing. You can have like these weird, crazy shapes, and some people do. This is where chord shapes come in. So why do we have what's called chord shapes? Well, because it's easy to play. It's easy to play and easy to remember, right? So for example, here's an A minor bar chord. It's easy. I can remember that. I don't have to think about A, C, and E. I can just, here's the shape. Here it is. I know how to play it. What about an open chord? Here's an A minor open chord. That sounds like a major seven chord. Oh, here we go. So we got a minor chord. That's an A minor chord, right? There are other shapes. Like for example, I can play it right here. That's also an A minor chord. Um, and usually it's these little shapes that people remember. Now, what I want to point out is, is that number one, shapes make it easier to play the chords. You don't have to think about the notes or anything, right? You can just remember the chord. The second thing I want to point out is that most people think the shape is the chord. So for example, if I learn an F bar chord, F major right here, if somebody learns that and then they've taken lessons some, some time later or whatever, and then they're learning an F major somewhere over here, they might think, I actually read this one. Somebody said, I've, I thought I already learned that chord. Well, you didn't. 
you, 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 you learned that shape. There's many shapes. There's almost infinite shapes. So that's how you, that's what a chord is. That's how you make a chord anywhere on the neck. And that's how shapes come into play. Why are shapes useful? Hey there, and thanks for watching that video. That's just one of our shorter clips from the longer Q&A sessions we do a ton here at Breakthrough Guitar. And if you're interested in seeing those and seeing everything that we have here, I highly recommend you click the button right there and subscribe. Also, speaking of the other videos we do, feel free to click right over there to start digging into those and advancing your guitar playing. We look forward to it, and we will see you next time.